It's the only punch not considered a power shot, yet the majority of experts will tell you it is the most important tool to have in your arsenal when you step in the ring. I'm talking about the jab. Today we're going to learn about different types of jabs, when to use them, and how to execute them. Welcome to Ring Smarts. I'm your host, Natasha Yellow. We are here at the Trinity Boxing Club in Los Angeles, California with a very special guest, WBA welterweight champion, Polly Malinaji. Polly, you recently won your championship in a foreign country against an undefeated fighter, Sinchenko. How important was your jab in that fight? I thought the jab was very important because, uh, you know, Sinchenko's main weapon was his jab, and a lot of times my main weapon is also the jab. So I, f I figured going into the fight, wh whoever's jab could dictate the pace and, and command the action would probably have a big advantage in the fight because uh, that means one guy would not be able to have his main advantage, and, and that was the case. You know, once, I, once my jab was better than his, uh, it really took Sinchenko out of, out of his element. Well, we're going to ask you to demonstrate some of your favorite jabs. Um, and let us know when to use them and how to execute them well. So, are you up for it? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. First jab I'm going to show is your basic jab, um, hands up high. Uh, a lot of times uh, it's, it, I use it with some power because a lot of times uh, I like to call this a power jab because um, a lot of times you run out of room. You need to, you're trying to gain real estate, especially for a fighter like me. I, I fight a lot on the back foot. I fight defensively. So many times you get back into a place you don't want to be. You either make a quick, slick defensive move, or sometimes that's not an option. So you use this power jab to kind of back the guy up and get yourself back some real estate. So it's pretty basic, you know, a lot of, a lot of times I'll do jab from down here. This is a jab that comes from a basic stance, keep your hands up. You want to push off the back foot and, and drive hard, you know, from right here. You can use it, you can feint for it sometimes just to make the guy bite and then throw it. Or you can just step in hard and throw it. But you want to push off that back foot. So you want to, you know, just so you're making the guy, the, the point of it is the guy's got to give up some real estate. And if he doesn't give up real estate, he's going to get hit in his nose with a hard jab, you know? So one way or the other, it's going to get the job done, you know? But again, you want to get that push off. You want to get that push off the bottom. So it's, it's like, you know what I mean? So once you get that, the push off is the drive and it gives you the power behind the jab, hence the power jab. The next jab I'm going to show, I usually use it as an up jab. I mean, you can use this jab as an up jab, you can use it as a regular jab, depending on your personal stance. Um, I call it, um, the time control jab or a tempo control jab. Basically, if you not watch a lot of my fights, a lot of a big portion of the rounds is spent just controlling the pace with the jab. I, I had to develop this kind of thing because I used to hurt my right hand a lot early in my career. So basically this controls the clock. It will keep the other guy on the defensive. It will frustrate the other guy because the point of it is also so he doesn't get his offense set up because he's constantly being peppered with the jab. You don't necessarily step in with it. Many times you step around, you pop it, you, you shoot it, almost like a rubber band jab. But the way I think of it is the guy's face is hot. The target is hot. That way you get, it, you get, that way you get a good snap on your shot. If you pretend the guy's real hot, like you're going to touch the oven, what do you do? You touch it and you go. So basically it's a sting. You're shooting it as a sting. And again, you can mix feints with it. You can mix little rhythm things with it just so you get the guy biting. Because if, if you always throw the same thing, Obviously, the other guy is going to start countering it. What it does is, this will pepper the guy. It'll, you know, the guy's trying to set up. A lot of times, you have like an offensive guy trying to set up. If you keep peppering him like that, it'll prevent him from setting up. And in preventing him from setting up, many times you will cause other mistakes. And in causing other mistakes, you'll be able to hit him with your power shots. The next jab is a variation of that rubber band jab plus the power jab. You can, you kind of have to adapt to the situation in this particular, with this particular jab, but it's basically a jab to set up your combination. So a lot of times if you throw a jab too hard, you're going to back that guy off too much for the right hand, but you don't want to throw too soft because you know, you may walk into a counter yourself. So you want to have enough spring on your, on your jab, but where you're not taking off your body weight to be able to not throw a right hand. So this is a jab to set up the combination and the point of it is to freeze them. If you freeze them, you can throw you can rip off your combination right afterwards. If you don't, you kinda gotta chase them with the jab. So Okay, so you're basically stepping in. And if you if you if you freeze them right off the move, you'll be able to step in with the right hand. And there's a combination behind it. Once you freeze them, if you get if, the, if you get this reaction, or you get a reaction where you're putting the guy out of position with your jab, that's the perfect time to let the right hand go and the hook go or any of your other power shots. It's a lot of speed, 
This particular jab, you need speed, you need to be able to cut the distance, but you need to be able to gauge the distance at the same time because you're stepping too hard, you're gonna smother yourself. If you don't step in enough, you're gonna wind up reaching. So you have to also gauge the opponent's reaction. This kind of thing, you don't throw probably in the first round because you're not getting the guy's timing yet. You have to have basically have the guy's timing down when you're throwing your jab, you're gonna see what he reacts to. Once you get his timing down, you can step in with this kind of jab. You don't come out in round one and start throwing the, the jab instead of the combination right off the bat because you don't know if the guy's gonna step and hold his ground or if he's gonna give up his ground. So basically, once you have that kind of timing down, you can start releasing this kind of thing with the combinations following. That is your jab setup. Your jab to set up the combination. And I'm out of breath. What did he say? He said step off the back foot, right? Step off the back foot. 